Hello, my lichens. Welcome to Ant's Morning, a newsletter that now is also a podcast. This issue is titled Crescent Beacons Over Night Sky. One, microphones and space teams. This week, I gave back the wireless microphone I used during my last performance. No por mis pecados, not for my sins, I don't know if you remember. And me not having the wireless mic means I won't be able to do these shenanigans anymore. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you go to my Instagram profile, miriam.writes.quotes.performs, um, I don't know why I named my Instagram like that. Um, yep. But uh, if you go there, <clears throat> there's a there's a highlight uh, story named "No por mis pecados," and if you go to the third to last story, you can see me singing the song "Besos One" by Bob Barnum, and I have a glitchy filter that I love, <laughs> and on the screen. I I put a couple of things in Spanish, something like This is not part of the performance, I'm trying to relax. Then, uh, pre-performance rituals with Bob Arnum. And in English, they give me a mic and expect me not to go all Bob Arnum. <coughs> Sorry, uh, <laughs> I have a bit of a cold. Which is another reason there to love autumn and winter, right? <laughs> Sorry. Stop, stop, Miriam. Stop trying to alienate your audience. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, every time I put on this wireless mic, I felt very much Britney. By the way, hashtag free Britney, right? Um, Well, I did this almost every time before I did the performance because singing Bob Arnum relaxes me, apparently. <laughs> and it helped me kind of uh, focus and warm up my voice. I told you a bit about this whole thing on a past issue called Performer Bruises. You can find it on my archive or if you were already subscribed on your inbox, if you look for the title. Okay, uh, since we were talking about Jeffrey Bezos, let me go on a bit of a tangent. I guess you heard about that whole thing about Jeffrey Bezos sending 90-year-old William Shatner to the exosphere inside one of his space teams. And as Raul says here, oh, you can find Raul on Twitter, at Dr. Graco, that's his handle, Dr. with a K, Graco with a C. And he said something like this. Well, this is a personal translation to English. For me, the important detail is how after landing, with all the medical and technical team next to the capsule, they all have to wait for the one and only Jeff Bezos to open the hatch for them. His first and only concern, putting himself at the center of the story. Always. So, as the song goes, Come on, Jeffrey, you can do it. Pave the way, put your back into it, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Bezos. Two, echoes that make me want to lock roll. Speaking about stupid stuff. Do you remember I told you on my last newsletter I found a website that claimed the worst thing that could happen to a red globe grape was hatred? And I found it very funny. <laughs> I think they were trying to write oidio, which in Spanish sounds almost like odio, hatred. And in English would be powdery mildew a fungal disease that covers young stalks and leaves of white dust. 
Before I realized this, I thought it would be hilarious to add an echo effect to the podcast when I said that part. So I noted it inside brackets and then I proceeded to forget to delete the note before sending it to you. <laughs> so if you go there, you can see the words. Don't go and say something offensive about a grave in, in front of the grape because it will surely die. And then between brackets, all capital letters, bold and underlined, <laughs> it says echo effect. A bit Spanglish even. <laughs> and this is the kind of mistake that makes me want to fall down and log roll away. <laughs> there is a gif uh, of the Simpsons that I love that it's very fitting for this. Um, it's Ralph Wiggum looking at Lisa uh, and smiling without stopping looking at her or smiling, just uh, falls to the ground and lock rolls away um, from a tiny hilltop. <laughs> that is the vibe. But hey, it's not a big deal. I can if a bit assembly, laugh about it. So, if you haven't already, I ask you, please, go listen to the last post podcast issue so you can hear how nice the echo turned out in that it will surely die part. By the way, <laughs> Ants Morning now is also available on Spotify. In case it's more convenient for you to listen to it there instead of on Anchor or on YouTube, you just need to go to Spotify and look for Ant Morning and there it appears. Magic. 3. Lichens, bromeliads and bugloses assemble. When I read this title aloud, I think I sound a bit like a cult leader, but you know I'm not, okay? <laughs> okay, I have some news for you and I wanted to tell you first, loyal subscribers slash listeners slash readers, a few weeks ago I decided to finally finish up my Patreon profile. Uh, sorry, I'm Spanish and I forget how you say that in English. <laughs> Patreon, I think it is, right? <laughs> so yes, now I have a Patreon. You can find it on patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. All together, without spaces or slashes or anything. <laughs> Okay, in case you don't know exactly what Patreon is, let me tell you a bit. Patreon is a Patreonet platform that allows people to subscribe to an artist's services to get exclusive content. In exchange, the audience pays the amount they deem right by choosing a tier or level or pledge. Patreon takes part of it but the rest goes to the artist. Once you subscribe and give your credit card or PayPal information, Patreon starts charging the amount you chose automatically, automatically at the beginning of each month. You can change tiers anytime, as well as canceling your subscription anytime. But then you stop having access access to the exclusive content and Patreon stops charging you. In my case, I have three tiers, one, two and four euros. And that in US dollars is more or less, well, according to Patreon, is one and a half dollars, three dollars and five fifty dollars. The higher the pledge, the more content you get. 
I've supported a few artists on Patreon for a while now, and I can say it's it seems a pretty safe payment method, so yeah, at least in my experience. Okay, I understand that this is not a great time financially, financially for many of us, um, so if you love this idea but you cannot join my Patreon, please, don't worry, uh, I got you, I understand. You can always uh, keep on supporting me in other ways, free ways, uh, like keep on listening to my podcast or reading it, and you can also read my self-published uh, stuff if you go to itio.miriam.navarro.prieto and you can click on any of my digital books and instead of marking a quantity to pay you can just um, select you can just write zero on the amount and you get the book for free so yes please uh, read my stuff and don't worry and if you want to support me even more share it around um, on social media, uh, if you liked a poem maybe, or tell it to your friends if you think they'd like it. So yeah, that helps a lot and thank you, absolutely. I had to battle myself a lot and I'm trying to change my inner monologue because it's not true those things my imposter syndrome says that I have nothing interesting to say, and if I do, I shouldn't be asking for money in exchange. So, shh, no, shut up, little voice. <laughs> I do have things to say, and it's fair to ask for a contribution to those who can afford it. You can have a look at the different tiers and benefits by clicking on Show More under the drawings. Oh, and everything will be in English and in Spanish, because I want to make my content as accessible as I can. So, yep, yeah, don't worry about that. I already posted something for each tier, so you'll be able to check those out the moment you subscribe. 4. Rose Mother or Tongue Bleeder Rubia Tinctorum A couple of weeks ago I found a plant outside my brother's building. Hola, Jorge. <laughs> and when I tried to identify it with PlantNet, that plant recognizing software, <laughs> turned out it was a rose mother. It had green stalks and leaves and they were thin and they went up a metal fence and the fruits are small, berry-like black fruits, basically. According to Wikipedia, well, the Spanish <laughs> version, I made a personal translation. The flowers are infused to use as astringent, a popular aphrodisiac. The administering of rose mother can cause unjustified concern, since hearing mucus, sweat, or milk turn red. This is because it contains alizarin, one of the strongest red dyes. The high alcoholic content in its fluid extract and dye has to be taken into account. So, an aphrodisiac that turns body fluids red and it contains alcohol? Um, excuse me, um, <laughs> one of my cats, one of my cats, it's, uh, I don't know, I guess he's looking at a magpie on the window or something, sorry if you hear him, <laughs> okay, um, so an aphrodisiac that turns body fluids red and it contains alcohol, wasn't there a Canterbury tale about this? <laughs> Just kidding, there isn't. But tell me this all doesn't sound like a 
Chaucer style mischief. But beware, the plant can provoke blood pressure imbalance and can be cancerogenic and provoke congenital malfunction. So be aware of that. <laughs> Looks like they already used it as fabric dye in the ancient Egypt. Rubia tinctorum or Turkish red. The only red dye back then that was sunlight resistant. Now onto my favorite part about plants. Some of the vernacular names of the rose mother are in English common mother, dyer's mother and in Spanish Enredadera, which is ivy. Enrolla, which sounds suspiciously as roll. Raspa, which basically means it scratches. Roja, literally red in the female form. Rubea or rubia, both old forms of redis. Rubia, which comes from the Latin rubrum. Red, but is the same word we use today to refer to female blonde people. Rubia que se planta y labra, which means rubia that gets planted and cultivated. A bit dadaist, a bit explanatory, I like it. <laughs> rubia silvestre, which today sounds like wild blonde. <laughs> Tinta roja, red ink. And my favorites, which I guess started out as a deterrent from its consumption. Azota lenguas, tongue lasher, raspa lengua, tongue scratcher, and sangra lengua, tongue bleeder. Those are very loosely translated, but you get the sentiment, I hope. When I was a kid, that whole rubia thing sounded sounded really confusing and the explanations they gave me weren't satisfactory. There's a Vallisoletan neighborhood named La Rubia in my... Vallisoletan is uh, from my city, Valladolid. In theory, uh, La Rubia was named after the plant, although I don't remember seeing them or maybe I didn't pay as much attention as I do now. Or maybe uh, the plant was there before we put houses on top of them. Eh. And I wonder if Rubia started out, started out as a derivative of rubrus, red in Latin, like the roots color, but then started being used to refer to the flowers, which are... <laughs> Sorry. My cat. Sí. ¿Qué? ¿Qué quiere? Ay. Sí. Sorry. Yes, I talked to him in Spanish because I think he wouldn't understand in English. <laughs> Which sounds weird, I know. Bien, bien, bien. Corre, corre, corre. There he is. Okay, maybe he can now settle down with me. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> but then started being used to refer to the flowers, which are yellow, so a bit rubias, blonde females, right? I don't know. 5. The moon, beacon of our anise. Can you hear him poor? So... <laughs> Today, I'd like to finish up with a poem by Beata Kuraksika, with whom I shared a Tast magazine's issue titled Moon, which we called enduringly Moon Scene. She also works there as an editor. I told you a bit about all this, um, and you can also read my poem on a previous issue titled A Newsletter Reading Will Abolish Chance, untitled by Beata Kuraksika. We bite our nails and 
dispose of the one in crescents, beacons of our unease out on display. There's some untranslatable play on words here that I love. One in crescents can mean, in English, moons that are in a crescent and in a one in states at the same time, or it can mean moon crescents that are one in. And I think it works especially well since the piece is so short. You know, I love this kind of balance between the unimportant domestic and the grandiose. It's very easy to fall on a commonplace when we put the moon in our artworks, especially in poems. You know that. <laughs> we all have read examples of that. <laughs> but this metaphor here of fingernails slash crescent one in moons as exposed intimacy is one metaphor I've never seen before. I love it. And on the written version of this issue, there's a drawing, well, a fragment of a drawing I did, I think, back in 2015, copying Galileo's first drawings of the moon. The originals were made with black ink, uh, but mine were made with dark blue markers and dark blue and purple color pencils. And that's all for now. Thank you for reading slash listening. Lately I've been getting a bit, <laughs> a bit discouraged by social media and feeling every time I use it I'm basically talking to a wall and I guess it's partly because of the algorithm but oof. knowing this here truly is some kind of communication with you gives me some peace of mind if you have any questions about Patreon or anything else really you can answer this email on your inbox or just send me a new message to miriam.navarro.prieto at gmail.com. Okay, until next month. Bye.